It's certainly true that the United States needs to engage in a much more multilateral and cooperative and partnership-oriented way in the world. And what the good news is that, you know, I think important and influential people on both sides of the political aisle are really aware of that, and they're looking for ways to do that. So the idea of a league or concert of democracy springs from a good instinct, which is we've got to reconnect. And both parties realize that that candidates on both sides. So that's great. I do happen to think that this particular form, though, will likely be a distraction because it doesn't create an institution that I think would really work very effectively on peace and security issues. It would be rejected by a number of countries that are important to us that would be very wary about joining the United States in such an initiative. I don't think there's any appetite out there in the world today for a new association of countries which is based around a U.S.-led ideological uh, framework or a U.S.-led sort of ideological orientation in which some countries are included and excluded based on judgments, uh, political judgments about their domestic political systems. And I think this league would in find itself with a very difficult choice. If it were inclusive and really let in lots of democracies, it would find that the lowest common denominator is so low in terms of common interests and perspectives that it would really have a hard time uh, finding uh, many things to work effectively on. So either you're very inclusive and the lowest common denominator is very low, or you're quite exclusive and just say, no, no, we're only going to let in countries that really basically agree with a fundamental sort of U.S. global security agenda, in which case uh, the world would say, is this really a league of democracies or is this just a league of American friends? And I think that the institution would really lack credibility in that sense. Behind the League of Democracies is very much the idea of democratic peace, that given that democracies tend not to fight with each other, they are natural partners to some extent in a peaceful league of saying, we are not going to fight with each other because we share these common values. That's fine, but the problem is, is that an effective way to go out and address the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Um, what to do in Iraq next, how to confront Iran's nuclear ambitions, how to tackle climate change. Um, yes, democratic peace is an important phenomenon, but trying to create an alternative peace and security institution, alternative to the United Nations, which excludes Russia, China, Vietnam, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and so forth, and say, now we're going to tackle the issues of peace and security in the world, strikes me as a difficult and probably bad way to proceed. I don't think we can say that the United Nations is a total failure and we're simply going to walk away from it and create our own little international institution sandbox and play in that instead. Um, other countries are not going to have uh, an interest in joining up with the United States in an initiative if they feel that it is based on essentially an effort to gut the United Nations and go around the United Nations on peace and security issues. Yes, the United States has been troubled. Yes, it falls short of expectations. But most countries in the world want to continue to try to work on peace and security issues through a universal institution to the extent possible, not a U.S.-led exclusive institution which rules out members with which the United States does not feel politically compatible. What's interesting here is there are really two different conceptions of a League of Democracies at work. One comes, sounds, when you hear Senator McCain talk about the League of Democracies, he really is talking about an institution that would be so broad-based and so sort of ample in its mandate that it really does look like something attempting to supplant the United Nations. He talks about a League of Democracies that would impose sanctions on Iran, that would uh, help in the effort uh, that he believes should be undertaken to marginalize Hugo Chavez in South America, that should work on Darfur. He talks about economic access and so forth. So I think one conception that's coming a bit more from the conservative side of the political aisle in the United States is for a very broad sort of ample conception of legal democracies that can really well be seen as an effort to supplant the United Nations. Uh, from the democratic side of the political aisle, I think the effort is a bit more focused just on use of force, peace and security, sort of a stepping stone to global NATO, but not necessarily trying to address all different kinds of issues. And there the talk is a bit more about an institution in which the United States would tailor its own ambitions and tailor its own policies to meet uh, the constraints that other countries might want to apply on it, the United States, and other countries would gain more access to U.S. policy. So there's sort of a softer, somewhat less ambitious conception on that side. So what's interesting in an election year is you say there's some interest on both sides of the political aisle for this idea, but when you look carefully, you see that there are actually still quite different instincts uh, behind the two, the two sides. So I think we have to look at existing fora, and see what's possible. Where necessary on things like climate change, if we're going to find ways to really bring the world together around climate change, we're either going to have to take innovative approaches to existing for or create new ones um, that are highly inclusive. 
But like I say, we can't give up on the United Nations and say it's failed, we're going to walk away from it, if we're simply going to replace it with an institution that's U.S.-led, ideologically oriented, exclusive, and so forth.